Hi there, I'm Horser, and welcome to Raccoon City. Today we're going to be talking about all the loops inside and outside of the police station. Starting at the front desk where our lovely attendant Rebecca will check us in, we're going to talk about the lamps, what you can hit over, and what you can't. Each of the Resident Evil yellow lamps are indestructible and unable to be hit over. You can hit over the signpost despite what it looks like, and this goes for both sides where you can't hit through the lamps. The entire table can be hit over, but watch out for survivors of the duck. Moving downwards from the middle of Main, going back towards the front desk, you'll find that this railing that you can hit over, except for the pillar where you can't. This is identical on both sides, so you don't need to worry about a different diagram for the other side. They're identical, mirrored in every which way. This is an example of how you can play this loop when a survivor doesn't know how to duck. You can just go for hits over the table. Now see here, where the Rebecca ducks, that's when you need to go for a whip drag. Now this is an example of what you don't want to do. Notice how the Rebecca is ducking and she knows how to dodge my whip. Admittedly, I am missing some of these, but this is a mistake on my part as well as hers. Now, if you've noticed the survivor is ducking a lot of your whips, you can hold out the whip to fake it and then go around the corner for a whip drag. They will usually save you a couple seconds of things, but you can fake it really well, and if they think you're going to go for a hit over things, you can just like line it up and hit them for free. Nice. Now next up is going to be the west staircase. This is differentiated from the east staircase, as the east does not have any of these obstacles you need to hit over. You can hit over these crates, however you cannot hit over these big green tubes. In no way, shape, or form. Now when people tell you to go touch grass as the nemesis, they're just telling you to go outside to these fantastic loops. You can hit over the entire loop. The bench, the barrel, and the cinder blocks. Now, if you go here as a survivor against Nemesis, it's a death sentence. You want to leave this loop as soon as possible. This is like a last chance scenario. This survivor is actually pretty decent, as they know how to dodge the whip drag, but the average survivor will not be like this. You can just hit them over it, they don't duck, and you get an easy down. Both of the fillers between outside short and outside long are the same. The bench and the cinder blocks can be hit over. This goes for this close one and this long one before the other loop. Outside long is nice, because going off the rules of all the other outside cinder blocks, the entire loop can be hit over. This is, again, a pretty unplayable loop for survivors, and if they drop the pallet, you don't even have to worry about it. You can just hit them over it. This other side is also completely hit overable, and any survivor that goes over here will have a pretty bad time. They're either forced to drop the pallet early, or just get whip dragged around the corner, as it's too small to dodge. The east office is sort of a pain to play if you're by yourself. If you have a zombie in the area, of course it is fun to keep a survivor locked in there and then have the zombie come around the corner. Unfortunately, as zombies are mainly AI, this is not going to happen very often. A lot of survivors do this without noticing it, but for the most part, a survivor will fake it twice and then take it on the third go around. Giving away either of these windows kind of sucks because it instantly gives access to the other window and you're pretty much forced to take it around another two times. So, in hindsight, unless you can get a diagonal hit like I just did there, be careful with these windows. This box is one of the more deceptive ones on RPD because you see that big open space in the top right and you're like, oh, I can hit through that. You cannot hit through that. The hitbox extends to the top of the right box, so pretty much treat this rightmost box as... It goes all the way up, you can't hit over it, don't even, like, try for this. This isn't really a loop you want to really ever hit over, because you can just whip drag it. This chair, however, is also deceptive, in the complete opposite way. There's essentially not a hitbox there. You can just hit him through it. It's great! So, essentially, the other side of this table is just completely empty. That chair? It's not real. It's your mind playing a trick on you. And it's nice! And the left side is completely normal. It looks exactly how it is. Thank you, behavior. Very cool. The penultimate set of obstacles in the East Office are this table and this overturn table. The overturn table is a complete wall. Don't even bother trying for this. It is essentially up to the ceiling. This is effective from every angle. Do not try to hit over the overturned wooden thing. It just won't work. And the hitbox from the end of the table legs do extend downwards, so pretend that they are just like a solid rectangle. This does not affect the normal table, but do be wary of this down table if you do try to get hits over this. The last obstacle in Aesop's is two couches and a table. You can hit over them. 
Now, heading back over to West Reception, this entire room is a death trap for survivors. Occasionally a pallet will spawn, but it really doesn't matter. The whole room can be hit over. The pallet can be whip dragged through. It's just, you do not want to be in here. Nemesis loves to be in here. Moving directly next door to the Welcome Leon office, or West office, this entire thing can be hit over. Avoiding the lamps, of course, but this is my favorite room in all of RPD. In the whole game, really. You can't hit over this end bit, but you can get direct hits over the entire table, save for the lamps, of course. I love being in here because no one expects the nemesis to go for a hit here. I do miss from time to time, as happens to everybody. Just make sure when you're going for a direct hit, you don't hit that big red box. Boom. And when a survivor starts getting hit by these, they start panicking, they pre-drop, they go in silly directions. I miss and I hit with a whip drag and it doesn't even matter. So, it's fine. The side desk in West Office is pretty much a death sentence for survivors. It's very hard to get a fast vault unless they play it perfectly and hits are essentially free. Now, while in the locker room you cannot hit over anything, whip drags are essentially free. You can drag the entire hallway. A survivor physically cannot dodge it if you aim it right, so... There you go. Another free down. The typewriter room next to the dark room is not safe for survivors. You can hit over this entire table. The lamp doesn't matter, and if you don't want to flex on them by hitting over the table, you can just whip drag the entire loop. For free. Bye, Becky. I really enjoy the library because while there are a lot of pieces that you cannot hit over, such as all these chairs stacked on the table, it feels a lot more knowledge based between survivor and killer. Depending on the angle of attack, you can and cannot hit over things. For example, the chairs on the table, again. But as I move my whip over into the green zone, I can hit her again. And of course survivors can dodge the whip drag in certain portions, but between here and the bookshelves, you cannot. This box here is one of the things that I mean about angle of attack when it comes to hitboxes. Now, you see here, you can kinda not hit it because the leg is going down. But then, if I move a foot to the right, suddenly I can go much further with it. And I can get much sillier hits by just knowing this simple thing. The chair leg will get in your way, but if you know where the chair leg is at all times, you're good. For the majority of this side table, you can hit over all of it. Just watch out for the tall boxes on the end of the table, as they are not something you can hit over. The lamps are fine, you can completely ignore them. But these boxes, you cannot hit over. Even if the pallet is down. Even if you don't go for a whip over the table, it's still a nice one to loop around because you can just whip drag between the entire space between the chairs and the bookshelves. Now going back to the top of main, we're going to talk about the railings. The railings on the side you can hit over, however you can only hit this space where Rebecca is standing if they're standing on the very edge of it and you hit their big toe. The railing guarding her is pretty solid, and this goes for both sides as they're identical. And remember, you can hit over this. Now heading into Chief Irons' office, we're going to talk about his desk. You can hit over the whole thing. This is much rarer to get hits on, but these two chairs and this table you can also hit over. So if a survivor is hiding behind the far one, bonk right on the head. The art hallway is not incredibly good for survivors, you can just whip drag the entire thing. You can only hit over the short portion of it, so that bit with the ladder and the locker, ignore that. The private collection room is much harder to get hits around, you cannot get hits over anything in here. But this is one that's pretty difficult to whip drag just because of the size of the loop, so this is either an eat the pallet type of thing or hope that they mess up type of room. I really enjoy the art room. Pretty much everything in here you can hit over except for that tiny box in the corner, but there's no way they can get behind it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Every box in here is green. You can hit over this one, you can hit over this brown thing that looks like it's slightly above the survivor's head, everything. If that pallet is gone, there's nothing protecting them in this room. 
See? Watch. And of course, if hitting over things doesn't work for you, you can always just whip drag the entire corridor. Just remember everything in this room, you can hit over it. Now, over to the waiting room, you can hit over the couches. Every couch on this map is identical, so if you see a couch, you can hit over it. The west hallway loop, if I can even call it that, is a death sentence for survivors. If they are even one toe in, you can just hit them with the whip drag through the entire thing. The records room has two boxes you can hit over on either side of the room. You cannot hit over the middle thing with the locker, but you can just whip drag the entire aisle on either side of it. The next room over, the operations room, has plenty of things that you can hit over. The entire room, in fact. The one thing you may be worried about is the podium, and you don't need to worry about it. You can hit over both desks, every chair, the podium. The pallet will be the only thing blocking you. It's also very easy to whip drag it. Now, going outside again, the tree, it has a very wonky hitbox, so you don't want to try and get hits around these corners here. You mainly just want to leave it to the very edges, if at all. Otherwise, just wait until the survivor is around the corner before you try to go and hit them. This hitbox does connect, it's just very awkward. So just remember the trees, they have essentially rectangular hitboxes. The actual loop itself is nothing to really worry about from survivors. Even if they crouch it, you can just walk around the corner, whip drag it, and then you get a free hit. They either drop the pallet or die. The west hallway exit leading back to the typewriter darkroom not something you need to worry about. This entire loop, you can just hit over it. It's not really a loop per se, it's an obstacle leading to loops, but it is important to know that you can just smack them over this if they get a little bit out of your range. The linen room hallway upstairs on west has one tiny bit you can hit over, but most of it is just whip draggable. For instance, this right here, you cannot hit over, but you can just drag through most of the room. In the actual linen room itself, it is dodgeable, but it is hard to do so. And in the hallway, essentially you can do the whole hallway. No issues there. Sara's office is a little bit trickier because there are segments you can't hit over, such as these chairs here, even though it looks like you would be able to. It's a solid hitbox. As far as the other side of the Sara's office, this whiteboard cannot be hit over, but this little patch between the whiteboard and the palette can be hit through. This is just showcasing the chairs you cannot hit over from the other side. And here's another angle of that. It's important to note if a survivor is able to dodging a whip drag or if they're just hugging a loop because sometimes you don't want to go for a drag. The smaller room inside the star's office you don't have to worry about really because a survivor will take one or two loops around this and then they will just leave for the hallway outside. The observation and interrogation rooms are some of the more difficult rooms to play because it's near impossible to mind game the window if the survivor pays attention. So you kind of just have to go for them blocking the window, really. It is possible to hit over the obstacles in the observation room instead of the actual interrogation room itself, but these will very rarely come up unless you're really cooking that day. And now that Rebecca's blocked the window, she is locked in here. But this is an incredibly hard pallet to whip drag around, just due to the fact that it's way too open. In order to actually get the hit over this box, you have to do it between the box and the pallet, because there's a little dip you have to stand on. Otherwise, it just doesn't really work. So, hug the loop. The speaker's table in the press room, you can hit over this entire thing. This is a pretty decent table to play around because you can just whip drag the entire aisle once again. And you can hit over the majority of this table. You just have to watch out for the metal chair legs sticking out. 
it is not really easy for survivors to do anything about this because, again, your whip drag length is the whole length of the aisle. And this middle chair here is what I'm talking about. You cannot hit over this from any angle. So if you see that middle chair and they're behind it, just keep going around because it is not going to work out for you. Fortunately, its hitbox is pretty accurate to what it actually looks like. This next loop I like to just call the L. It's shaped like an L, and you can hit over the whole thing. You can whip drag it, you can just hit them over it. Parts of it you can even hit over if they crouch. It's just, it is amazing for Nemesis. Like a lot of loops on RPD, if a survivor does not leave the loop, they will just have a really bad time. It is incredibly easy to double tap here. And if you're feeling a little hungry and want to go to the break room, you can get yourself a nice Jill sandwich over this table. The pallet that spawns in the break room or the break room hallway is a god pallet. Do not hit a survivor over it if they're not contaminated and injured. Just take it, break it, and move on. You can't play this. The east exit hallway pallet is not incredibly playable. It depends on the angle that you come from. If you were to the side of it, it can hit you even if you're just walking outside the door. It has a very wide hitbox, just be careful of this. This is another one you need to destroy. There's not really any getting around it. You lose way too much time trying to walk around. So if they drop it... If they drop it... Break it! This next exit on the roof hallway is not incredibly played. It's kind of rare to see this, but if you have to come in here, a whip drag will do you good. But a survivor that knows what they're doing will just go behind the vending machine here. Rebecca got hit there because she didn't dodge it, and then right there she's behind the vending machine, so she dodged it. The helipad itself is actually one of Nemesis's worst loops on this map. It is an east side exclusive, so that's unfortunate. But you cannot hit over either of the air conditioners here. Now, the pallets on the helipad, especially the one that's closer to the vault, sort of cannot be played around with your power. This sort of turns you into an M1 killer, just because of how they're set up. This tiny spiky bit on the side here kind of eats the first half of your whip if you try to go for a drag, and they're just too short to really get enough distance to get successful drags all the time. For the most part, when you're playing the helipad, you want to run counterclockwise just so they can't have a free fast vault into the vault, but that's not always optional. So if you can't do that, just honestly, just make them break the pallet. Go for M1s. This is not really a place you can play around with your power. You waste way too much time. You just want this pallet out of here. And if you play it clockwise instead of counterclockwise, they can just leap out. You miss a whip and they are gone. Bye, Becky. And then they go into that powerful pallet downstairs and you're screwed. This is probably the most powerful vault on RPD for survivors. You do need to be careful with the new perk finesse because it really, really works against killers that want to go for hits at windows. See right here. I did mistime it a little bit, but finesse really messes with the mental timing that you have in your head, and then we're going to have Leon run here without finesse, and it's much easier. The lesson you want to take from this is just be careful going for hits at windows, because if it's a drop, you're going to lose a lot of distance, especially if you miss. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope this helped you out a little bit. If you want to leave some comments below about what maps you especially struggle on as Nemesis, so I can kind of get an order for what I should prioritize next. I chose RPD just because it's my favorite map, so I felt a little bit of a bond with it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep up with my Nemesis-related content. Hit the bell if you want to get updated really quick, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye!